guys, my name is Simone and welcome back to 5th grade math with Elsa. The topic that we will be covering today is geometry. As always, our videos consist of 8 to 15 review questions that are timestamped in the description box below. Here is our links for further reference page that we have linked in the description box below. It has links that will help you further your understanding on all the topics that we have covered today in this video. Let's start with the first question. Alright, so let's jump right into it with question number one. Graph the following points on the coordinate plane. 4, 3, 5, 1, 0, 7, and 2, 2. I'll give you guys a few seconds to solve this problem, and if you need more time, feel free to Okay, so here is our answer. To solve this, we first need to understand how exactly the coordinate plane works. We have two lines that are the two axes. So we have the x-axis, which is right here, and we have the y-axis, which is right here. So the x1 goes left and right, and the y1 goes up and down. So for each coordinate point that we have, there is a first number and a second number. The first number is always the x-coordinate, right? So this number is the x-coordinate. And the second number is always going to be the y-coordinate. The x-coordinate, which right here is 4, determines how many points left or right we need to go. So if we have positive 4, that means we need to go right 4 steps. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this is where our x-line is going to be, right, for the first point. Now, the second number that we have is the y-coordinate, which is 3 in this point. So the y-coordinate determines how up and down we need to go. So if we have positive 3 for this point, we need to go up 3 spaces. So 1, 2, and 3. And we have our first coordinate point. The same way we can figure out the rest of these points, 5, 1, 0, 7, and 2, 2, and they are all drawn in the graph over here. Question 2. Graph the points 2, 1, 6, 1, 2, 5, and 6, 5. What sort of shape do these points form? I'll give you guys. Okay, so the answer is a rectangle. Let's use the same method that we did for the previous problem. We need to graph all of these points individually, right? So we remember from the last problem, that the first number is going to be the x-coordinate, and the second number is going to be the y-coordinate. This, the up and down one is the y-axis, and the left and right one is the x-axis, right? So, for the first point, we have 2 over as the x-coordinate, and 1 up as the y-coordinate. So we have 2, 1 right there. For the second point, we have 6 over as the x-coordinate, and 1 up as the y-coordinate. So it's right there. For the third point, we have 2 to the right as the x-coordinate and 5 up as the y-coordinate, so that's 2, 5. And for the last point, we have 6 right as the x-coordinate and 5 up as the y-coordinate, so that's 6, 5. Now, we have these four points and we can connect them using these lines, and we can figure out that this makes a square or a rectangle. Okay, so here is a little bit about each uh, about some quadrilaterals and their specific properties. So a quadrilateral is any four-sided shape. So if it has four sides, then it's a quadrilateral, no matter what. All right, so the first type of quadrilateral is a parallelogram. It has four sides, like every quadrilateral. And the two sets of opposite sides are always parallel, meaning that they never touch, which is what parallel sides are. So... This side and this side, they are opposite and they are parallel, which means that they will never touch. Same thing with this side and this side. They are opposite and they are parallel, which means that they will never touch. The second type of quadrilateral we have is a rectangle. In a rectangle, the opposite sides are parallel, just like a parallelogram, but they are also equal in length. And there are four right angles. So in a rectangle, these two opposite sides are parallel and equal. And the same thing with these two opposite sides. Additionally, there are four right angles, so one, two, three, and four. This is what a rectangle looks like. Now we have a square. A square has four sides, 
then all of the sides are equal and the opposite sides are parallel, and there are four right angles. So in a square, the most distinguishable fact about it is that all the sides are equal. So one, two, three, and four, these are all the same length. And there are four right angles, just like a rectangle. So a square is essentially a rectangle, but all the sides are the same. A rhombus is, has, it has four sides and they're all equal, but the angles are not 90 degrees, right? So a rhombus has all equal sides, just like a square, but it is not a square because it doesn't have 90 degree angles, right? Now, a trapezoid has four sides, but only two of them are parallel. And the two that are not parallel are always equal in length. So this is what a trapezoid looks like. These two sides are not parallel, but they are equal in length. These two sides are parallel, but they are not equal in length because this one is shorter than this one. So this is a bit about the few different types of quadrilaterals, and they're pretty common, so you should try and remember these properties so that you can identify them properly. Question three and four. So question three, a rhombus is a parallelogram. Is this true or false? And question four, a square is a rectangle. Is this true or false? So I'll give you guys a few seconds to solve these questions, and if you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Okay, so the answer to these, both of these are true. A rhombus is a parallelogram. If you remember from the previous slide, a rhombus is a quadrilateral where all four sides are the same length, but they do not have 90 degree angles. However, they are the same length, meaning that these two opposite sides are parallel and these two opposite sides are also parallel. That means that the rhombus is a parallelogram because the two opposite, the, the pair, opposite pairs of sides are always going to be parallel. Now question four, a square is a rectangle, true or false? This is also true because all the properties of a rectangle are present in a square. So a square has to be a rectangle because a square is essentially just the same thing as a rectangle. However, all the sides are the same length, right? So in a square, this side, this side, this side, and this side are all equal in length, but the opposite sides are still parallel and the angles are all 90 degree angles, which is all the properties of a rectangle. So essentially, a square is a special type of rectangle. However, a rectangle is not a square because a rectangle has different lengths of sides. And a square has to have all the sides equal the same length. If you found those videos helpful, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more. Feel free to comment down below any questions that you may have about anything that we covered today. Thank you guys, and I hope to see you in the next one.